I'm going to call the uh, special meeting to order at 5.58 p.m. Um, new business is to adjust the FY25 budget due to transportation bid. So uh, at the February meeting, the committee agreed to move forward with a growth of 2.69% over FY24. That number changed since that meeting, and because we're going into public meeting, we have, meeting, we have to present the budget as it's updated. Um, so this meeting is just to change the uh, percentage increase. So we're presenting at public hearing an increase of 4.87% over FY24. We're looking for a motion to move forward with that figure. And that's the impact of the transportation? Yes. Which we're going to talk about further when we're in the public hearing. I'll entertain a motion. You can make the motion. Well, make, all right, I'll make the motion. Uh, I'll second it. I'll make a motion to approve the budget as presented with the amended transportation part. Um, anything further for this one? Do you have all those in favor? Oh, right. All those in favor? Aye. That's it. Okay. Uh, we are adjourning the meeting at 5.59 p.m. Call to order the Conway School Committee meeting. Um, Thursday, March 14th at 6.02 p.m. Uh, we'll start with public hearing for the proposed FY25 budget. I'm going to share a slideshow. This is just a truncated version of the full narrative uh, that went out, narrative that went out um, explaining the budget. We're going to move a little bit quickly, but feel free to stop and we'll definitely come back to questions if we need to. Uh, so just a, a quick Recap here of how the budget is developed. Uh, we have talked about this at previous meetings, but for any public that's watching, uh, we do strive to create a budget that is needs based and student centered while being fiscally responsible, but taking a hybrid approach to development so that we can balance level services, uh, supplemental funds, and new needs and initiatives. And I want to quickly point out that level services does not translate to level funding. Uh, at a minimum, there's going to be increased costs for. Uh, staffing based on contractual and non-contractual wage agreements. And then we also look at historical information uh, of non-wage expenses to account for any accounts that maybe haven't been fully funded in the past. Um, this is important to understand in a small school, particularly because when level services starts off, off at wage increases alone of 3 or percent or higher, it's very difficult to tackle new needs and initiatives. So. Um, we do our best to get everything that the school needs presented and um, taking a fiscally responsible approach to that. The timeline is there for you. November, December, we start first draft development, work through the school committee meetings, January, February. Here we are in March. We have a public hearing and then a vote to adopt, which I think is on the 26th of this month, uh, if we're ready to do that. And then annual town meeting is June 1st, which is the last step of the budget process. First, we're going to talk about level services. So this is pretty significant in Conway. It was significant even before the transportation increase, um, but that added about 2% with the additional transportation costs that we're going to talk about further as we go through this process. But even the other expenditures without the significant transportation, we were well over 5% for level services. So that's significant for us. You know, that's $120,000 is a, is a lot of growth. Uh, you can see here the various factors. Wage is having a significant impact on it. Uh, our COLA is at 2% in the contracts, and then the average step increase is about 3%. So anyone in teacher contract or IA contract that's not at the top step will receive about a 5% increase. We've also accounted for non-union employee adjustments. So that's anyone who's building-based and uh, central office staff. Also, a significant impact this year, about 1% of the budget, is the Unit A longevity. So that is a contractual option in the teacher's contract that teachers after, please correct me if I'm wrong, 15 years of service or 19 years of service. I can't remember when they can elect longevity, 19. Um, they can opt into longevity in the contract, which pays them $4,000 a year for three years. Conway had five teachers 15. Thank you, Lisa. 
um, that's a 1% growth right there to the budget. Uh, in if this were a one-off expense, we may try to fund this with another funding source, but it is going to be in here for the next three years, and we obviously can't predict what supplemental funding looks like in three years from now, so we've added it to the budget since it is going to be a more significant expense. Another driving factor for wage increases is the Unit A employee separation costs. We do not have any teachers uh, retiring that we have to pay out sick buyback in FY25. However, that is a line item in the budget. So that's included in the $90,000. we are going to make recommendations on how to tackle that because that's another 1%. And if we don't need it, we don't want to overinflate the budget. Um, but it is included in the first step of the level service. And then our non-wage increases. So this was significantly lower last time, only about 26,000 or so, and the majority of that was to account for an adjustment based on the ESSER grant. So ESSER is a limited time funding. It expires in September of this year. And at level services at all of our schools, I throw the ESSER expenses that were paid from the current year back onto level service so that we can take a look at what it will look like in the future because those funds will run out. Um, so that's 20,000, which is another 1%. We made adjustments for very few expense lines. Conway is holding its own as far as budget lines are concerned outside of trash and grounds contracted services. Those have been over the last few years, so we've made some minor adjustments there. Um, it might be $3,000 total between the two lines. And the big one is transportation. So uh, the original budget was drafted with about a 10% increase. Uh, we have sent out the contract. We can get into more details of that as we go through the process here. But you can see I'm listing this at a $50,000 increase now over the four or 5,000 that we had in, in the first draft of the budget. And that is because our bid that came in for the new five-year contract came in significantly higher than we anticipated. <laughs> we certainly didn't percent, uh, predict an 80% increase to the elementary school. Um, we are gonna talk about that in more detail as we go through, so hold those questions on that part because we'll swing back to it. Yeah. Um, are you gonna talk more about the sick pay, by, or the separate unit A separation costs? We well? are, okay. yep. Um, so we're at 7.78% or $166,104 for level services. New needs and initiatives were very minimal for Conway this year. Uh, Kristen has done a really good job of keeping this expense down, but also considering what the needs are. And school committee in the town has been generous in prior years to make sure that when we did have bigger asks, they were funded. So we felt like we didn't need a whole lot this year. There's no new positions, no major increases. You can see it's 0.41%. A uh, good chunk of that is for field trips, equity, and access, which is twofold. Uh, transportation costs are up for all of our trips, so we added funds in there. And then we also want to be able to provide additional su to support to families in need, particularly for the nature classroom trip, if uh, there's additional families that can't afford or need greater scholarship amounts. Curriculum consumables is being increased to support the new math and ELA curriculum that you've heard about this year. We did take in, into account the existing line item for textbooks, but we did need to fluff that up a little bit. And then principal's office supplies just gives Kristen a little bit more flexibility in random miscellaneous things that are funded under that line, which could include staff appreciation luncheons, um, teacher swag for coming back to school, those kinds of things. So with that minimal increase, we're looking at 8.19% at this point in the budget process. We obviously know that that's a pretty significant number and, and I don't think anyone here would wanna present that number at annual town meeting. Uh, so administratively, we took some steps to reduce that figure and what we are presenting today at public hearing is 4.87% over FY24. That's level services plus the minimal new requests. And then we are supplementing with 20,000 in rural aid from FY24 that we have not used yet. And then supplementing with the remaining 30,000 that is available on the ESSER grant. The school choice 21,000 is the employee separation cost bill that you just asked about because we're not paying it out. Rather than keep it on budget at a 1% figure, we're gonna move it to school choice, hold it there. I recommend we hold it 
as many years moving forward as we can so that we're prepared to pay it out when we do have a teacher retirement. One thing to keep in mind is the longevity payments I talked about in level services. That's a good indicator that you have several senior level staff members, teachers that will be retiring likely in the next three to five years. Usually you take that at the you know final phase of your um, employment here at the school. So that's something for us to keep in mind as well. It's, it's not so much the one teacher for 20 months. It's when, what, what, two years ago, when we had the yeah. five and 120,000. Yeah. If we didn't have ARPA, and this was the only, this was the town's only use of ARPA outside of the um, public safety building, which is going to be under construction this year. Yeah. It, was, and we could be facing that in the future. You know, there's nothing saying that all five of those staff that elected longevity are going to go at the same year, but it could be two, it could be three, you know, any combination of that. So it's something that we definitely have to be prepared for. We want them to out. stagger. We want them to stagger it. I'm trying to convince them all to stay. Yeah, that would be even better, actually. Right? Okay, so grants and revolving funds, you can see the figures there. We do supplement the budget with another almost $800,000 that does not fall on general fund, which is a pretty significant amount. A good chunk of that is related to the WINGS program that we have here, where we bring students in from other districts. Those schools pay tuition to send students here, and then we fund that um, teaching staff, IAs and teachers, with the tuition that we receive. So. We're, we're pretty lucky to have that. Another significant portion of that 739,000 is school choice payments, which covers um, almost all of the other IAs from this building. There are no IAs paid from budget. So those are accounts that we have to keep a really close eye on because they do cover such a significant level of staff. We have to make sure that we're being careful and not overloading them and overusing funds so that we can continue to fund in the future. So today, our total FY25 operating budget is just over $3 million with the general fund at 4.87% over the prior year. Uh, I'm not going to read through the expenses. A school committee has seen this a couple of times already, but for anyone that has the documents and this is the first time you see it, these are the accounts that DESE sets up as the function codes that we use to classify all of our expenditures. And I'm just going to give you some quick facts of how expenses are distributed. So 71% of our budget is goes to expenses related to teaching and learning. And about 70%, 77%, I'm sorry, of the total budget is wages, of which 1.4 is paid to staff who are working directly with students. So that's typical. That should happen, particularly in a small school. So we're always pleased when we see the number at 75 or 80%. You know, that means that we're doing what we need to educate the students and the funds are going to the proper places. Other expenses total about 500,000. And then just a side note that all expenses include school-based staff or other expenses that are school-based supplies, materials, whether that's classroom related, janitorial, et cetera, and then central office cost shares, which there is a central office budget in the full narrative on the last page for anyone that's interested in those numbers. Some quick charts here so you can see visually that dark blue is the category categorized expenses related to instruction, teaching, and learning. So you can see they are taking up the majority of the budget. Same thing theme here with salaries and wages. And then other expenditures, it evens out a little bit. Pupil services covers transportation, and then the green is operations and maintenance. One thing to note here is that the benefits and fixed charges piece of this pie chart is smaller because all of the benefits for our employees fall to the town. So like at the regional school, that piece of the pie is much more significant because Frontier covers those benefits. But here, we don't have to pay for very many things. Central office benefits are included in there for Conway's portion, as well as some other small insurance things. But the majority of insurance thing, um, fees healthcare. go directly to the town. Healthcare, yep, goes directly to the town. Um, historical info for you to look at, you know, 4.87 for Conway is a, a standout, you know, over the last six years, even at 3.79. And I think in 22, that was the year that we added almost a percentage point to grow our summer program budget line. Um, I think we added 15,000, which is about 0.75%. So 
Uh, we did have a big ask there, but otherwise we have not seen this level of an increase in some time. Enrollment, just so you can see what that looks like. Conway's enrollment is remaining pretty steady. Um, we're not seeing a significant decline or significant growth, which the growth is unfortunate because that means the town isn't going to see additional Chapter 70 funding in order to help fund the budget. But it's also nice that our school choice and resident numbers are remaining consistent, particularly because we rely so heavily on school choice to fund our expenditures. Oh. There's some additional enrollment data. So you can see the orange is total students, uh, blue is resident, and green is school choice. And this goes from newest year to oldest. And then a, a quick recap for you of where we stand. Uh, we are looking at a 4.87% increase or $103,904 over FY24. I mean, I think it's important that this is what we're presenting it. I, the, the budget is still being um, worked on yeah. by the school committee. This is not the budget we're presenting to the town. Um, these are all the factors going into it. We're not looking at a 5% or even close to 5% right now. There's still discussion about how we can lower that further that needs to happen. <laughs> Um, obviously, we didn't know coming into tonight that we, we thought we were going to be much more within striking distance, but 2% lower before the, tra the transportation contract. So um, school committee has not yet been able to massage the number at um, 4.8. It was closer to it was closer to 3 at the time. So, um, so I'm just saying that because historically, at public hearing, we're pretty close to our final number. And so this one's going to have to move. But it, you can see all the pieces that make up the final number, which... Um, you know, we can answer questions tonight on the agendas to talk about it further tonight. We're missing several members, so um, I'm not sure we're making any votes or any movements toward that. Um, and since town town meeting is so far away, we have plenty of time to kind of to work on that. <clears throat> Do you want to talk about um, the transportation yeah. contract? Sure, transportation budget. So we go out to bid every five years. Um, we put it out to bid in December, um, and then time timing wise. It, we got the information uh, Wednesday before last. So um, right before we started our round of school committee meetings, this one happens to be the last, the, the fifth one. Um, and it came in significantly higher, um, as we said, 80% higher. And we had only um, put in a 10% marker. And that 10% was looking at other growth of budgets around us. Um, however, so the, the bid itself actually is near market compared to what the market is in Franklin County. Now, the problem with Franklin County is that the market is set by you know, multiple bus companies. However, there is no competitor out there. So while we're seeing across the state, so while this, this particular bid is still lower, it's the lowest in Franklin County for per bus per day. Um, overall, Franklin County is not having competition on its bids overall. When Comescus was up north, they didn't have any competition. And then out toward Mahar didn't have any competition. Um, so it's free mark. It's bar, It's comparative to other what other schools are paying. Um, we're also getting. It's kind of this is happening across the state. Anybody who's doing bids right now are seeing large spikes. They're collecting that information. They're, they're calling their state reps and senators and such, trying to do something to help schools who are you know there's a you say a monopoly on the market. Um, However, you know, I did contact Crypto and asked, you know, what's the story with this larger number? And basically, it's the market value. They have to replace. They have to replace uh, buses. Bus prices of buses are up. They're taking care of their own people, prices are up, and that their last bid was lower than market value. So, which is true. So, um, kind of thing in the defense, but at the same time, right now this bid is not final, which is the only one we're working with. So we had to kind of bring forward. Um, this is the number we have. Um, the joint meeting in um, April, the committee will decide whether or not to accept that bid. Um, it's in a tough spot because if we don't accept that bid, um, our options are we limited. We have no transportation. <laughs> <It's walking. laughs> our options are limited. <clears throat> yeah. so. um, the other thing that's impacting the contract is a change in structure and how they submitted their price structure. So on the prior contract, Frontier was carrying a larger burden than, than the elementary schools. Mm -hmm. um, in this contract for the next five years, it is equal. 
the pricing and structure is the same, which is why the elementary schools are seeing an 80% increase. The contract overall is up 48%, which is still pretty significant, um, but the 80% is hitting all four elementary schools because of the way that they changed the pricing structure. So Can that be changed or? That's, that subjects us to greater fiscal jeopardy from the, to the whims of the legislature. Right? I mean, the, every year, is it 70% reimbursement, 80%, 90%, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas when it was structured the other way. Right. So, right. so regional transportation is reimbursed by the state. So Frontier receives money there. Um, right now, the governor's budget's at 80. They're talking about this maybe the first year it goes less set by the, the state legislature because of... The revenues coming into the state is at an all-time um, low for a five-month period. Not all-time, last 20 years low. Yeah. Um, steady decline in revenue. So the state legislature will be basing their um, their budgets based on the April, um, what they were able to collect in April. So. so that explains why the transportation number is so great. The Conway is going from about 70,000 for the three bus contract to 125,000 for the three bus contract. It's a 50, almost a $56,000. So it, how could the contracting of buses be structured like countywide or for us that could, is there a way, can we, is there a piece of legislation? Is there something that could, because I, I remember when they first switched to the countywide bid or whatever, um, and, so and, and there was two bidders, and they were like within one dollar of each other, and we and I remember thinking, you know, collusion. Um, <laughs> I remember saying it in meetings that this that that's just awful suspicious, and so we haven't entered the so the countywide they tried to um, Greenfield Montague. Trying to think of some of those elementary Mohawk, Mohawk. Um, Union 28 was in it. They all came together to put a bid together. Um, and this was uh, 10 years ago. Um, or maybe again, it was, maybe it was last They time. just redid this year, though. They just well. redid this year. So, so five years ago, we didn't join because we were saving over a hundred and something dollars a day per bus um, compared to what they got. So, if you look at our last contract with Gripico, it was. You know, I think it was 130 dollars per day per bus, cheaper than what they were paying as they came together up north. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we did get our savings there. Um, so that's why we did chose not to go in with them because we thought we could do better with their own local. But well, we'd be paying more if we had entered it. So theirs came in about 50 dollars a day, more higher than what ours did for the for know, the current one. So right yeah. now, exactly. So they, they just got there. We've been there again. They're still more than us by 50 dollars a day per bus. So, the, the, I mean, the tough part is that, you know, we're getting hit all at once. Um, you know, the school committee is, you know, it's the year of contract with the bus company, and it's going to be a discussion at the joint meeting. You can certainly give me ideas now as well, or during the meeting, about it, about what direction to go. But it is a, we had to propose it as the cost as it is. You got to recognize that you're going to have a cost. If, even if you were to deny that bid and try to go back to the market, there's, you, you, you're not going to either find a vendor or you're going to pay more. You know, that's just, uh, that's probably the, the fiscal reality. And it kind of stinks, but at the same time, when you, when you start comparing the cost to other districts that are around us that are what they're paying and it's still lower, then you're kind of like, well, you know, as business people, they have the right to raise their, you know. How full are the buses? When they get to the school, how full are So they, you know, we did a, a study of what we're currently running on. It's not the, the, the problem is with Conway, you guys got a lot of area to cover. Um, sure. Your elementary ridership is 14, 19, and 8. The uh, C1, which is your 14, goes 18 miles and covers, takes 37 minutes. Um, your C2 goes 26 miles depending on the ridership could take up to 53 minutes depending on if the last stop is on it or not and then c3 has eight riders that take 16 minutes i mean it takes um goes 16 miles for 36 minutes so and again that one depends on stops. so 
So if what does that are, come out per student? What's that? What does that come out per student then for transportation? A lot. <laughs> a lot. It was I about mean, 40 kids. So you were looking at 19, yep. Yeah. Yeah, 41. Less than, less than choice in to the school. That's crazy. Yeah, we don't give any of them transportation. So it's no, just for the 95 no. residents. That's it. Yep. Just been wondering, you know, you hear stories East and Mass, and yeah. bus gets to the school parking lot, and there's a traffic jam, all the parents dumping the kids off. The school's not too full. The buses, you know? Yeah. Oh. No, because that's that's all kids. Well, all in all, a 4.87 percent increase is better than many most towns uh, in the Commonwealth. College of Wines on the Cambridge School Committee, they're looking at a 23.25 percent increase year on year. Better us than them. Cool. Huh? So, I mean, so you know, you can charge for bus riding. Um, but then again, so you look at who you're charging um, people who don't have the means to have their parents driving to school, um, you know, that kind of thing. But I'm just saying Northampton charges on a sliding scale, that kind of stuff. I'm just telling you what your, your options are. Problem is you don't have sidewalks, so you can't really have the walkers. <laughs> Walker. <laughs> um, you know, within a mile of the school, you know, you can't have people on 116 walking to school. No. So you're, you know, you're, you're stuck busing. And kids. the length of the routes. Yeah. Right. You know, you're not going to put kids on the bus for an hour and a half. Can we have them hitching to schools? <laughs> right. Just Uber. Someone can make a lot of Just money. Just buy five vans and you're good. How about a senior uh, property tax work off that? They can show the kids to school. You know what? That's not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, viability. And when you, I mean, when you do look at what the resident enrollment is projected to be, it's a, a fair number of families are taking care of. Utilizing the bus, like it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's the majority of residents. I, I have a question regarding uh, how many uh, Conway Grammar School age students are, are choosing out of Conway. Have any idea? Do we want that number? Like, Didn't we just say that 40 students are utilizing busing out of 147? Uh, but that's not residents. all residents. 95 residents. Oh. The school choice people. 95 they, or residents. Oh. So, do we want to? Yeah. So I'm looking at the Residence. agenda. No, no, just here. There is. Yep. Yeah, here, here. So we we did our public hearing for the proposed budget. Well, you're in the middle of it, right? Yeah. Now. Yeah. So and we we basically the public hearing, hearing allows the allows the uh, our guests to kind of just chat with us. Cool. So that's so, a separate thing than public comment. Yeah, public comments is, is part of the regular business. So okay. public hearing is just basically open discussion where the public, which are <laughs> you guys here, um, well, can just ask as many questions as discussion. Yeah, that's what's that? Finance. Finance. Oh, finance. Finance. Right. right. Yes. Yeah. And so they can ask. Um, cool. I'm trying to get onto Desi's site to pull the number of choice health students. I know I can't. Have that yeah, that. I just at the top of my head. I actually have it. What's that? I think I have that same tab open somewhere. Oh, you do? Yeah. <laughs> it's just going on. So there really aren't any creative options here. Like we have Her one bus company, that's what they're charging. It's mandated. It's something like that. Kids don't hope these kids take over. They are, they have. Yeah. This, uh, uh, Steven still drives the bus. Is the, is the name of the... Yeah, Steven and his wife. Um, so according to Desi's October 1st report, there are only three residents choosing out, and one is a set of siblings, so only two families. And one of that is parents that work in demand and want to take their kids to work with them, I think. No, no this no. is choice from public Choice, yeah. choice, choice to out. another public choice school. Uh, 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 so where you're paying out, you got to write in. Does this, um, <clears throat> do you recognize the same? Does that person work there? No, I wonder if there's a parent that works. Well, I checked there. out the uh, Department of Revenue, Division of Local Service, uh, State Aid, the Conway, going back in 2003 versus <laughs> now. And if you adjust for inflation, we're like 40% lower than now than back in 2003. Here we are. In Looking your, at the individual line yeah. items, or, let's just say there's not a, exactly a lot of fat to cut off the bone here. Yeah. So, in, you know, we will talk with the committee. Um, using a lot of really how to reduce that and you, it, your two options are to dip into choice 
or to reduce staffing. You know, um, and so you know that we will we'll be discussing later. But that's where yeah. there's no other real um, um, streams, and we can talk about and we'll talk about that as part of the, in the general. We can, we have in other meetings gone right into it and discussed it. You know, um, but you know how it becomes a risk of how much you want to spend of your choice money, but um, you do have funds there um, to be able to bring this down so the town can afford it this year. Um, but that's the other side. We don't, on our end of building a budget, we don't know what you guys have for money coming in and money going out. I mean, I know you had a tough year, so I'm going to guess you don't have a lot of money. Um, but, uh, you know, that can be reduced, um, can be reduced somewhat that way. Or if it's a really tougher time, you have to look at reduction of staffing. And, um, you probably would start with, you know, instructional system of that kind of thing. Well, we have 100,000 minimum projected of new growth. So that's our, uh, our our gift from heaven, so to speak. Oh. A whopping 100,000. Well, yeah. Another way to say that is, you know, 0 0.9 percent. Just a zero point nine percent is our municipal new growth. Yeah. Like, do we don't have? Does the state start getting snarky with us if we increase right now about a third of our students or school choice? If we were to go higher, does the state care? Would we get penalized? Obviously, we don't get incentivized. Do we get penalized? The state no, no. So the state doesn't care. They basically um, we we. You know, we send them a report of who we get, and remember that you know choice is a Western Mass thing. It's not a uh, in the Cape. There's not a lot going on elsewhere in the state, so that's why they haven't adjusted the amount you get for choice. Nor do they really. It's kind of an add-on to different kind of things that we're kind of you know, we submit and whatnot. Um, so you know, you could try to increase choice. The problem is that you're looking at our class sizes up there now. As you, you're kind of showing it, you know. Ideally, in elementary school, the, your your prime class sizes are 18 to 22, you know, and so if you're somewhere in that, and then you're not going to get um, many more students after the first couple of years. So, yeah. you know, kindergarten, first grade, um, and choices on tonight's agenda, right? Can you do that, do it? No, it's on, it's it's on tonight's agenda. agenda. So we'll be talking about the amount of um, slots, you know, we'll, we'll try to maximize that. <clears throat> Not maximizing the number, but create a healthy number. And that also depends on the class. So we go to Kristen for that. She explains, you mean, if you got a couple, you know, if you have kids who have greater needs in that class, you may not want to be pushing that thing up to 22 to 24, that kind of thing. Or um, you have classes where you may not have greater needs, you, you can keep that, that number can go up. So we'll talk about that later. But there it's isn't. also challenging when you have large class sizes going out. Like you can see the yeah. next few years, Great. 8, Great. 12, and 9. That those are big numbers to then backfill yeah. and add on top of it. Yeah. So well, Kristen right. does a really good job of at least maintaining so that we're not losing any revenue. Um, Correct. I mean, you look at that kindergarten class of 20 coming in with 20 residents, which is woo -hoo, 20 residents, but you guys are in that weird spot where you don't want, right? You want you want 50 percent yeah. choice to offset the cost of that class. Mm -hmm. and, and the class that's going to go out, you know, is, you know, What's the one going out this year? I don't have this. Um, this is the 19, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, Numbers are sometimes deceiving because they count the students and the numbers. Oh, so what did you say, Kristen? 18 in the class. But, but how, how many shows up as 20? Oh, so there's three in the ladies' class. Oh. We're talking, we're talking I think 11, 11, I think we said 11 were school choice. So we really want to make up 11 somewhere, and we will do that. We're going to be in kindergarten, but we will do that. Do we turn away school choice? What did you say? Do we turn away school choice? If we're going to have to for kindergarten. Right, 22 is a lot. Um, yeah. So according to this, of the 20, only six are residents? That's what I have. To what? 14. We're losing 14 school choice this year. Oh, okay. So you're you're going to get a you're going to get a hit. 14 going out, and then the kindergarten class coming in is two. So you're going to lose 12 times five. However, 60,000. I'm really trying to by continuing to have the you know the culture that we have and the classes places. What's coming up soon is school choice recommendations. So I'm hoping we make up many of those throughout the yeah. you know we're not going to put 
for school choice students in fourth grade, for example. So maybe two here, yes. two there. Two. We have plenty of school choice applications. Oh, I and, you know, I hate turning, any, turning anyone away, um, but um, we're going to have to. Mm -hmm. But we're also going to be able to really bring up some of those numbers here. If you were to turn, if you were to reduce headcounts, especially people on a union contract, that costs us a lot of money too, right? So uh, I'm not a, personally, obviously, your your budget, but personally, I'm not a big fan of uh, chopping heads because you pay for it more heavily on the other side of things, which uh, tends to be short sighted. Right. Well, and obviously, the school is excited. Your if you're going to do reductions in staffing, you you don't have the reduction. You don't have teachers to reduce because you're a one grade level with supports. Um, you'd have to go to support staff, and they're hired for a reason to support different needs of different students into different grades. And so, but it is. I mean, it's a reality to have with people watch and clench and that kind of stuff. Whatever. It's a reality you have to have that kind of discussion when we talk about I said this in a. In a other towns in the same kind of position, and you have to have the reality question. If we're going to come to you and ask for additional positions some years, we also have to have the conversation about whether or not it's necessary to reduce. And I'm not sure, I don't think we're probably not going to make that recommendation, but it is one of the things that is, yeah, yeah. is at the disposal of the. Um, and it's definitely something to keep in mind moving forward. I know we want to focus just on one budget year, but I can't stress enough about you know planning for the future. We're talking about using $30,000 of ESSER for this year, that's not going to be there in 26. So that's an automatic deficit of 1.75% or close to 1.5%. So, you know, we're going to be and starting use, off and another use, right, year. Right, and if you use more choice, right. so you're going to go back to, you know, slide one where we say, what is the actual percentage of increase? Next year, we will start probably, um, you know, we won't know what the COLA is, but if you could just throw a holding number in there, um, you know, you're going to be starting at We're probably going. starting at six or seven yeah. next year. Yeah. This, and, and then, so what are you going to do to offset that? At some point, there's going to have to be a correction where um, the town's going to get hit with a big number, you know, and then you do a correct that, that corrects the course of the, and then, you know, it's the override, so to speak. It doesn't mean the town needs an override, but it's going to need an override of funds to offset the school budget. And we had to do that, we had to do that in Wheatley about four years ago. Um, they were in the same kind of thing, and, and then some of them had to do a full override for their town. But um, you know, Wheatley, I think they get it was almost a double, it was a double digit number where they had to do it was like I think it was eleven percent or something like that where we had to adjust so that the budget could last for and you know and they're probably within one or two years where they're going to do another adjustment. Um, it's you know that's the that's the problem when you have budgets that you know. You're, Limited number of people working under that budget, and the budget cost of living increases alone are higher than whatever, and the state's not giving them less money. Yeah. Well, the uh, school transportation in Northampton is using the uh, sliding scale. That's about all voluntary, correct? They can't require a legal change to pay for busing. It's legal. It is. It is. Yeah. Like Major qualify. schools have to provide it, but. Because it's offset by the state, but yeah. municipalities don't have to. You got to give them an education, but not a ride to school. Right. Right. Exactly. Uh, okay. Doesn't make sense. So regionally, you, you regionally, you, regionally, you have to get them because the state's saying they're giving you the money. So, yeah, yeah. so um, well, I mean, it makes it. And also, when you start looking at cities and you know, the number of kids who are walking distance versus to their area <laughs> versus the two or three that may be walking distance here. <laughs> if they take, if they take the road. No. After the woods. <laughs> <laughs> the way to save on transportation costs is to is for us to regionalize K through twelve. I don't but lots of studies have shown that regionalization does not save town money. Well, you don't get it doesn't save you employee costs. There is no duplication of services. We already share the central office, but we would save transportation. And once our health insurance deductibles from for the four towns get as close as they are now. People don't like the little kids going out of town. Well, aside from that regionalization, it's worked out. Unfortunately, it hasn't saved most towns. Has not saved money. It's the other way around. People moved to Conway for the the, the school. Mm -hmm. You know. It also just doesn't save money. You know. 
property value. We regionalized too. We had, school. Nobody likes to talk about it, but when we regionalized, you know, if, if you were building a district, you would not build three elementary schools within two miles of each other. Well, you would, not, you would not. Bill, how many towns are on the vineyard? There's six. How many elementary schools are on the vineyard? Six. On the vineyard. It shows you what having some empty houses to tax will do for you. Yeah. Every single town has an elementary school on the vineyard. I don't think I think the vineyard could probably fit in Conway. I don't know if it's 36 square miles. Conway's 39. Right, that's what I'm saying. Now. But it, just we to got, say, we got to start thinking about ways we can bring these numbers. Well, it's about the revenue side, the expense side. I mean, I mean, you start reducing headcount of people coming here with school choices. How we kind of pay for ourselves, and we're we're, uh, we're, we're that's tough. And my thought is maybe uh, you know people should start paying for transportation. I don't know. Just a thought. Which is grant on the board? Are those? in a sense revolving funds too because grants kind of come and go so these grants that are referenced here are ones that we know we're going to get every year at least the same amount as the year before uh, are those state um not necessarily a good chunk of it is a special education grant from um, at the federal level uh. it funnels through the state but um, there's a certain allocation for conway that won't change so and it then it won't change i mean it, it certainly could but it hasn't changed in a long time it's actually grown slightly um over the years but i'm i don't and think that's kind of how the, that's how the federal government gets money to public education it, yeah. it, it, well they send some to the state and then it goes through by needs that's why we know we're going to get it every year it's a non-competitive grants there are other smaller grants that we'll we'll go for that we get for you know we'll get Ten thousand dollars for one year, and, right. that, and that's not not what's listed there. Those right. are the ones that are kind of come and go, but um, like Title One or you know um, things like that, which you know looks at low income and that kind of thing. So yeah. um, not a lot though. Yeah. Any other budget specific line item or anything that I can answer? Thank you. Very good presentation. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Moving on to the next item on the agenda. Um, yeah. we'll have to close the so you go ahead, you, just, you say you close the hearing. Okay. Uh, we are closing the public motion. hearing. Making a motion. I only get to do this when Wayne's not here. I'll have Elaine train me up more next time. Well, you only do this once a year. Yeah. All right. Uh, make a motion to close the public hearing for the proposed FY25 budget. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All right. Right. There we go. Um, next item on the agenda review and approve the minutes of February 20, February 8th, 2024. Uh, make a motion to approve the minutes. Any comments on the minutes? I'll second. All right. Any comments on the minutes? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approval? All right. Um, financial statements and warrants. I uh, don't have a financial report for you from the last meeting because I've been completely consumed by fiscal year 25, um, but I can get the warrant total for you on record. So since the last meeting, there were 13 warrants totaling $75,868.34 time electronically. I signed them, but when they come to the select board, I sign them. I don't sign them when they're in this school. That's okay. Um, the principal's report. Um, so, you know, just to brief up, I know everyone received this, but um, really some great data um, right now. Um, some numbers that I haven't seen post COVID. Um, so we did our NEWA testing, which again, we can't put everything on one or two tests, but after talking to teachers and looking at specific kids, the scores seem to be very consistent to what's going on in the classroom, with a few exceptions um, in terms of like children with test anxiety, they can have text anxiety at eight years old, um, maybe scoring lower 
and then they really are demonstrating in the classroom. But our knee was were are something to really, really cheer for the staff and the students. So we've just not had scores like this. Um, so in reading, this is grade three, four, five, six. 86% of our students are on or above level right now, which is remarkable. Um, in math, 82% of our students are scoring on or above average. The new one is a, is a real rigorous test. It's, it's no joke. You know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's, um, it's very rigorous. There isn't a writing component. However, we are keeping a right, uh, an, um, close eye on writing assessments and um, our new EL program. It's really great because you can see. So I did, I went to, I took take all the ELA blocks and I went from kindergarten to first grade to second, it took me a couple of days and they just flow together. They're doing the same thing in fifth grade that they're doing in first grade, just different level. And it's really great to see. So, and then we did our dibbles, which were pretty, you know, it was the first time we did them in the fall and they were fairly concerning. However, we haven't been teaching that way. We've changed our whole approach. And in grades K to three, 84% of our students are on or above level. And the Divils too is the real deal because it's it's for K, K to three, it's one to one. So um, you really are seeing where students are at. And then three to six, they take a maze, I'm sorry, four to six, they take a maze test. And that's about fluency and comprehension and then that, you know, pulling all the skills together, decoding all the skills and reading. We have 79% um, on or above level. I mean, I don't like to say to the teacher, yay, we did great on this test, blah, 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 because I don't want to give the message to the teachers that the tests are everything. But having said that, we always talk about the kids, like who scored what, and this is matching what. And this is a real, um, Good picture of where our, where our kiddos are right now. So, I'm, I'm just going to say it's like an indicator of the staffing we have, right? the, the quality of the experience that the students are getting. Mm -hmm. uh, we brought in the U Fly programming, which is mm -hmm. going to support that uh, early K through three yeah. uh, learning to read. So, yeah. um, and yeah, Dibbles is is like the way to understand what a kid needs. So we're getting this assessment. Uh, yeah, so. And then what we do is we figure out what they need. We have, you know, Brenna, Brenna Bean who's doing it. We have interventions to take them out, give them what they need, six weeks, go back, reassess. Yeah. And you know, you're an intervention, you know, you know intervention. Yeah. And so that's working very, very well. We also move staff around based on the needs. You know, we see this student hasn't moved from red. We need to give them more support, so we're very flexible in doing that. Um, our second grade teacher was almost in tears because she said, "This is working. It's working." It was just, you know, the scores were just right up, and we're seeing that. Um, so, really excited about that. Um, and then, I don't know if school choice recommendations are next on me. I, I don't know if it's somewhere else. I'm sorry, I don't look, but. What did you say? It's more of a vote later, but so it can be. Oh, okay. You can move up, but it's up to him. He's in charge. <laughs> so um, we have, you know, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, probably up to eighteen school choice applications right now. So I'm confident that we are going to be able to fill um, most of the kids the spots that we're losing. However, you might see a class that has, for example, fifteen students in it. And we accept one school's choice student. And you might think, oh, how come we only accepted one? Why don't we accept three? We not only go on numbers. I mean, I did work in the district at one time that went solely on numbers. Not the story of the children, not the story of the class. Big mistake. In this district, which is great, as an administrative team, we're allowed to look at the story of the class. So if we have 15 in one grade and we have only one school choice just have faith that we're doing that for a reason. We don't just look at the numbers. So, um, so yeah, school choice letters will be going out on April first. Um, and I know. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Look at him being bossy. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be silly not to. They're they, they, well, to let's be a let's school school give them the feeling that they have a power over it today. <laughs> Actually, Darius taught me that where it's, it's, we, we, it gives us a permission to take, um, so like, a okay, so let's say we have a, so we're, we can take less than one or more than one. Am I saying that right? Greater or two, equal to oh. one. Yes. So give yes. or take one yes. of what we vote. Because there have been times when we put in, we put three two out there, let's say. And that's just necessarily here, but just wherever. And then you have a student a, a resident move in like next month. And the and just the composition of the class changes, the needs change, and we want to dial back on the school choice. This gives us permission to do that. Or if we have a student that moves maybe a family member gets a job somewhere else and we want to rather than two school choice students we want to take three this gives us the ability to do that does that make sense so give or take what we yeah. put on yeah. like the flexibility to yeah. go up or down yeah okay and then um you can read the activities i don't i don't have to go off so it's really plus or minus not less than one Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you, Denise. I was struggling. Yeah, because I didn't know what that meant. Because it's yes. less, a little less. Than yes. Yes. Okay. Greater than or equal to one. Right. Okay. So one or more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um. Let's see. You know, I just want to point out uh, third and fourth grade. I belong to this. Field trips are getting harder because you know the children love field trips. Teachers love field trips that occur in that But the, the bus, bus prices, no offense to Gripco, but parents just can't. We try to fund them as a district because parents can't, you know, a trip to. So we do, for example, Frontier. The students go twice for two days for Junior Olympics, one day for Step Up. That costs our school $750 for those three trips. We can't ask parents for money for that. And also, you know, sixth grade went to the science museum this year. The cost of the bus, let's say it was $1,200. We can't ask 17 parents to fund that. So that's getting to be really tricky, um, not only with the transportation, but the public field trips. So. That was a small, that's a relatively small part of the budget increase, though. I mean, I I, I, I was, I, I don't know if you saw, there was, it was front page headline that the and they asked people in their 30s what was their memories of elementary school. Number one, by far, was field trip experiences. By far. And and I'll test to that as well. And it yeah. was like, so I think we should be doing more. I wonder if like, you pulled the, like the parents and just asked, like a survey. So we have a little school council, which is awesome. We have kindergartners to sixth grade on the school council. We haven't added three year olds yet. But. And loud and clear, they, they really want like, each grade level to have their field trip that they do each year, you know, and kind of the students are really interested in field trips. They so we still have nature's classroom, right? Nature's classroom and, and nature's classroom is almost $300 a student. And if we added buses, it would be 425 or something. Yeah. And our parents are so generous. You know, we have parents who, might give double the amount for so we have staff members we have wonderful staff members who say here's two hundred dollars for the students so you know we try to offset a lot of that but sometimes it's hard you know i know we, when you get to frontier there's the eighth grade field trip and there's yeah, potential yeah. for study yeah. and trips abroad and do we like still that. do ellis island and plymouth and no, because of the cost. Yeah. yeah. See, those were those were wonderful trips. Yeah. Really. Super. Remember, Rick Gifford always did the Boston yeah. trip. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, my kids. Was, yeah. Well, love Jeff, it, right? Not Maddie. <laughs> Jeff loved it. Yeah. So I mean, I, I don't know. That's a tough one. This. Those are tough to say goodbye to. I think that those are worth the cost. Well, you know, we built the budget not knowing about the transportation yet. So next year, you know, I know the next year the budget's going to get increasingly hard from what everyone hears. Next year, I, we certainly will, um, you know, really give us some really good thought and talk to Jerry's and Shelly about that and bring it forward, you know. 
to the library, it's two hundred fifty dollars, and our kids can't. They could walk to the library, but they can't because there's not a sidewalk. Two hundred fifty dollars to the library. Our first grade teacher always wants to go to the library. Yeah, you could <laughs> walk through the woods and then go down Elm Street. It's not that hard. <clears throat> you could, yeah. So yeah, that's that. Thank you for saying. You do a lot of fun things here. You know we Those have our special. great traditions. You know what's funny is we. We've made the Greenfield Recorder, I think, eight times this year. Last, last week, we're on the front page. And so I noticed J Jeremy put something, a picture on social media. And somebody said, do you do any work at that school? Rude! Those <laughs> days are work. They're learning <laughs> days. They're math days. They're yeah, they're very <laughs> <arts in> festival. <laughs> they're very intentional. I'm like, rude! High <laughs> right. day is not eating pie. Well, maybe you <laughs> We've entered the school can be learning and fun, right? Yeah. On math, they do do math. And STEAM, they do do STEAM. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, on to public comment. Any public comment? No. Hey, good evening, everyone. Nice to see you all. My name is Victoria Palmer. And I'm the psychologist at the Sunderland Elementary School, who has the good fortune to work within this wonderful Union 38 community. I'm also the co-president of the Union 38 Educators Association. I am very proud of our talented faculty who work together so diligently with passion and creativity within their various roles. Tonight, I want to extend my gratitude to the school committee for your incredibly hard work in supporting Conway Grammar School, for your creativity coupled with temperance in your leadership. I believe Union 38 and Conway Grammar School thrives in part because of your caring leadership. I'm speaking tonight with regard to the 24-25 school calendar. We surveyed our membership to ask their opinion about the two proposed versions that were shared with us by Darius. 60% of our membership voted in support of the two week mid-year December break. Now, some of the reasoning members discussed was how the two week proposal allows our students and our faculty to spend more time with their families to get and stay healthy and to come back to school refreshed and ready for learning. We wanna thank you all for considering this when you're voting on the 24-25 calendar. Thank you. Thanks, Victoria. Any other public comment? On to unfinished business. Okay. Yep. So you have the policies that we reviewed last time. Um, yep. So we're, those are up for a vote. Policies KCD, KHA, LBC, E, HAA, E, HB, GBEE, JICJ, KDC, KDCB, EFC, and EFB are up for a vote. Entertain a motion for those policies. A motion. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Then we're removing one policy, uh, KB, KCB. Um, I'll entertain a motion to uh, remove that policy. A motion. Second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And then the uh, FY25 budget discussion. So this is an opportunity for school committee to further deliberate um, and what we've been doing at other committee meetings because all of the elementary schools are in the same boat with transportation and really high budget uh, presentations at this point is Darius and I have been presenting the options to reduce the number, which he's talked about a little bit. 
Um, staffing cut would be one option, uh, which we would likely start with an IA. Um, not ideal, and I don't think it's something either of us support at this point. Um, another option is to present it as it is, move forward with that number. Do um, we have any indication that that number is not going to be accepted, or did they give us any feedback in terms of a number that they want us to be at? So we would eat the entire growth of the town. Okay. With this budget, without even frontiers budget. Right, because you mentioned 100,000. That's what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, okay. and our thing was 100 and total was 106. Right. Somewhere around there. Somewhere around there. So it, it, we're, unless they have another flow of cash coming in, um, it's, it's, it is one of the options, but they, they wouldn't be able to it. I mean, you know, you, everybody saw the, the headlines and everything. We did get a grant from the state, pretty unrestricted, except it has to be, yeah, it, uh, it has to be associated with the floods. But we got 1.245 million, so we anticipate that that will. There's some highway, you know, some things, but most of that we're having to pay for deficit spending that we've already done, and then we're on the emergency, etc. So that'll help like a little bit. Um, but it, it, you know, I I worry every year about and you know, and the things that we can do is make sure that parents family members in this school faculty members that live in town come to town meeting that that's one thing i'd really like to see a greater emphasis on not telling people to vote just making sure people know that it this is an important thing and to come and the numbers have been ticking up i think last time you had nine school families um which was a recent record but um that's that's something that could help. That, that's something that could help. But you know, the, the numbers are scary. And it's you know I know I know historically when the numbers are over three percent, there's people that make negative comments and, and attempt to persuade people to vote the school budget down. Yeah. And I think we're in a and what position. happens if that happens? We just go back to the drawing table. Correct. So if your budget so you is accepted, it's great. So if your budget isn't accepted, you have to go back to present another budget. Okay. Um, and, and and what the thing the just the demographics of the town are. To, on the one hand, we're getting the the, the kindergarten and pre K numbers look stronger than they have in years. Um, but on the other hand, we have the oldest median age now that Conway has maybe ever had, and we're we now have seven seven hundred and something. Conway residents out of the 1800 are 60 or over. And those are, and town meeting tends to skew older in the people that attend. And so th those are the people with the least daily interaction with the school. And, and I were, you know, right. I mean, every year I worry, but this year with Frontier and Conway both coming in like this, it's, I also think we have resources that we can tap into this year. While I'm cautioning us for the future, because we are going to have multiple years of these kinds of numbers to talk about, we are projecting to have around 400,000 in school choice, which is almost two full years in reserves, which we should have a good, healthy balance there. But we've been able to save in other areas to build that fund up and to sit on that with a number this high doesn't feel responsible. Um, so I would recommend that we use an additional school choice amount for the FY25 budget um, and that we have to watch that moving forward. Um, there's placeholders on school choice as well. So sometimes we won't spend all that money. For example, there's 30,000 for special education transportation. We may not need all of that. I have it there as a holder for us if we do. If we don't need it, it helps bring our balance up. So, you know, the 21,000 that's in for employee separation costs, we're not actually going to use that next year. It's just there in the event something comes up. So, you know, I think we're safe to use an additional, I would even recommend 2% of the budget. So if we use an additional 45,000 in school choice, we'd be at 2.87 cents. We'd be at 2.87, which I think will make a significant difference to the town for sure. It's $45,000.
And I also feel like we have a healthy balance in school choice and we have enough of those expenses that maybe will be less than what we're projecting. So timing wise, um, we scheduled you guys to have a separate night to do a voting of the budget. Um, we can still, we're missing people, so you kind of you know kind of have to think through how you want to do it. You also have time. I mean, you, you have a June meeting. Um, if we, as long as we let the people working with the budget in the town know the direction we're probably we'll be going, that they, you know likely we're going to come in at around three or a little bit below three percent, they can continue. They can start working with their numbers. That's the only problem with holding off is they want to know. They don't want us to hold off. You know, hundred thousand dollars spending or not, or fifty thousand dollars spending or not. Um, so we have a meeting set for. I think it's April twenty sixth. I can't. Yeah, March. 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 I'm sorry, not April. So yeah, March. You have one for March twenty sixth to pass up. You know, the, the vote of budget, usually coming out of this hearing. Um, twenty eighth. I'm sorry. But you also have to consider that you're missing two members. Um, you can probably move that forward and get that done, where you <clears> can hold off. You can have the meeting discuss it there or you because we haven't um posted the agenda yet um can i ask a question yeah so at the march 26th meeting if let's say we directed you to give us a different use of school choice funds to adjust the amount mm -hmm. that would be yet another presentation like or different than what we did so you would say do that shelly would she the numbers she'd give you what you're at, then she'll tell you what your ending balance is, school choice, and you could vote the budget at that meeting and get that thing, put this thing to bed. Um, so we don't or, have to have another public hearing? No. Okay. That is why we had a meeting prior to this one is, well, either way we were gonna lower it, but um, as long as you lower the budget after public hearing, oh, okay. nobody can complain. You just can't raise so it. Nobody will complain, right. anyway. They can, actually, <laughs> no, they still can complain. Yeah. Um, well. So I would prep the budget with an additional 45,000 of school choice funds supplementing the general fund. It would be much more condensed. We wouldn't go through this whole thing again. We'd get a line by line and you know what the bottom line looks like of our revolving funds. And then we could discuss with the hopes that everyone is here next meeting. And do we already have that on the calendar? So yeah, it's the 28th. It I said 26, mm -hmm. but it's the 28th at seven. Okay. So we did, we, I, this year for the budget, I mean, for the whole kind of budget season, we did public hearing and then later in the month. And we even said we could even do it remote. You know, everybody just go in. That was the idea. I think someone might even stack an hour apart, right? Yeah, we have right Sunderland there. and then Conway. So we did them an hour apart because we assumed everybody's just going to show up remotely. It's not on a Wednesday, is it? It's a Thursday. Okay. We don't Collaborative usually meeting. have these types of last minute curveballs like the transportation contract. Right. But you also, within your power, you can have as many meetings as you want between now and June to have any many votes as you want. You know what I mean? So you don't have to follow that schedule. That was the schedule was kind of built for the way it's been so many years where public hearing maybe someone shows up maybe they don't we have a pretty healthy budget we move it forward and you just need to kind of do we want to show transparency of not voting the budget at the same night of public hearing which we did for many 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 years and then when we got feedback we said okay we'll put it on every night um because we, we say that because april we just had the joint meeting doesn't mean you can't have a public meeting that month um and you could even push it off to may to have that final um, I don't know when the May meeting is. Sorry. Well, the work's but closed by then. For me, it's closed 30, 38 We're not doing work, so you can usually the budget lines two weeks, yeah. we've been told, but from it's other times. But, you know, yeah. Oh, but, it's not till May 22nd, though. Oh, no, so, yeah, that that so we can't with that one. But we, I mean, we have basically the information, the transportation bid, even if it does get you know, tweaked a little bit, it's still basically going to be that large increase that we have to work with. So we don't have any negotiating power. It's really a decision to like, how much school of choice do we want to use now? I, I do think about the future, like, without the ESSER part, we're going to be looking at, again, looking to what other funds are we going to have in the future? Um, are they first or second? 
Uh, for March, they're second. Okay, so it makes you a little longer. Yeah. If it, uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's what you should do is have the meeting in March with the plan to vote the budget to move forward. You always can come to a conclusion that you're not ready and you need to hold the vote until, and make another meeting if, if your other members push you that direction. Are there ever multiple options presented? Like what it would be like using 45,000 from school choice or some other different. Yeah, amount. I can have all of that available. So you could, based on the amount of school choice, you can set what you want your ending percentage to be. Right. So Shelly just kind of said, let's just drop it 2%. Well, 3% isn't going to get shut down. Think. It'll get you just below 3%, which is kind of the. Yeah, but it's it, right. Is it so one percent is twenty-two thousand? Twenty-one thousand, yeah, twenty-one twenty-two thousand. It's trying to understand the repercussions. It's down the line. Yeah, it's hard to like understand. But, you know? but the flip side of that is, you know, we don't want to be slaves to an arbitrary number because these are like human beings, and it's all about excellence and everything else. And so, you know, that a number, any number, is arbitrary. And, um, you know, and and in years that it has gone above 3%, you know, there's even to the, what, I, what I tell our, our senior population is that there's all this really good data that shows that an excellent school increases your property values by five to 10%. And, you know, and they'll respond, well, we don't see that until we sell it or die. And then it's our kids that get that game. But, um, but <laughs> we're going down, you know, but, um, but, but, you know, the, 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 there's a benefit town wide though. Like one of the reasons why this whole thing works, works as the, our budget process in the town is because there's someone on the school committee that is putting information but that is a conduit for information in both directions between the town and the school committee and um so like you know and, and um but there, there's a whole lot of other budget processes for the town that sort of weight on this number yeah. you know the, the 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 cola for town employees the the three professional contracts for you know top level town employees that are waiting on you know, or the, to, to be finalized based on this number, um, the, you know, it said it go all the way down the line. There's all kinds of other municipal initiatives that we may or may not be able to do because we're waiting on this number. So there's, once we get this number, there's still a whole lot to do town to, to get the towns, you know, shift so in order. I would think we keep the next meeting and I'm bringing more data on school choice so that you all have more concrete information to look at of what enrollment and what revenue and what expenses have been. Let's look over the last three year period and see how consistent it has been. And then I can give you projections of what bottom line is supposed to be next year. And then we can decide from there. And I will have prepared what the different percentage point supplement funds look like to the general fund. That would be Sound amazing. like a good idea? That okay. Be amazing. And I Thank still you. think we'll be able to come to a vote. I don't imagine we won't be able to. But if yeah. we do, like Darius said, we can schedule an April meeting if yeah. we need to. So. Should we also be considering the idea of adding one more school choice student? Beyond. Um, rather than just taking two? Kindergarten? Well, not kindergarten. And they're at 22, right? Oh, so, I mean, so I just was wondering, is, is that something that should be considered? So at a minimum, we've got to replace the outgoing, which is a large class. So no, it's not. Oh, um, sure, that's a possibility. Yeah. I do like know first that, grade where there's fewer students. Yes. And I, I do know that, um, you know, it is definitely in my mind that we have to well the best case scenario is to fill that deficit right that right we so that's actually that's a what, challenge that's absolutely what we'll be looking to do and we could possibly add one one more beyond because that could make up could yeah help to make up some of this yeah. that we're going to be well seeing. keeping the integrity of you yeah. know um, of the school you know yeah how we are there is a school and yeah yes yeah. And I mean, the way your school, we'll, we'll, we'll vote on the 
the school choice proposal that you included, right? So um, yeah, but it could um, land better than we yeah. even anticipated yes. because you could have that additional student, which yes. is a lot. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for yeah. getting ready yeah. to put that together for us for our next meeting. Oh, that's that's uh, good news. That's bad news. It was a, you know, the transportation being 2% increase of the entire budget. Yeah. It was a big surprise. So that helps us figure out what to do. So thank you. All right. Um, all right. On to new business. Speaking of school choice, um, so Kristen presented kind of a draft or a plan of what yep. uh, what would be proposed for um, slots for school choice. Mm -hmm. uh, so entertain a motion on um, accepting the school choice plan. Is that still what we want to do? Is that being well, amended to well, replace the 14? Well, well so the way that she has it, I think, yeah. is greater yes. than or equal yes. to one yeah. okay. at mm -hmm. any level, yes. right? Correct. At any grade. Correct. So, in, so you're really voting to be a school choice school because that's what the state requires you oh, to vote on. And then you can decide, right, if they want to follow Kristen's recommendation. Sorry, I'm talking for you. Um, well, it's, right. Right. it's like that's speech I gave at the last meeting. So now she's doing it. It's kind of like it's just a little same thing. Same time. Right. So no, it sounded very Darius. So we're, we've historically been a school choice school. Yeah. And we are voting to continue. Yes. You have by law to vote right. every year to be a school choice school. Got it. And then we, okay. So. A motion. I'll make it. Oh. Do you, do you I'll to? motion it. And I will second that we are a school choice school. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. okay. Don't least, tell we, Mr. B, but I mm -hmm. sure wish we could take those nine school choice kindergartens. Maybe we will. <laughs> Don't tell Mr. B. <laughs> Ten. It's, he says 10. The word, oh, 10. Yeah. I mean, when the word is out that amazing things are happening with education here in town, that uh, we do have families that want to join our community. So mm -hmm. the word is out. Yes, the word is out. A realtor friend say that there was more houses for sale. They could sell 10 houses in Conway. Oh, I'm, uh, easy. I don't know. Easy. Yeah. No, okay. Um, so we have our school calendar for 24-25 uh, first reading. Yep. So you're going to be looking at this at the joint meeting, and you know, as uh, Vicki had mentioned, there are two versions, and really the big difference between the two is whether or not the um, Christmas, New Year's holiday break um, goes comes back on the second, that Thursday, or comes back on the sixth, the following Monday, and it's kind of the it's the problem all the schools are dealing with. You know, so, so you're extending the school year out at the end? Is that what you have to do? And push it, the, the end date by two days. Huh. So the, still the 13th. Yeah? No. no. So one's going to bring you to, huh. uh, look here. One's going to bring you to the 13th and one's going to bring you to the 11th. Before snow days. Before snow days. It's a nice long winter break. Uh, so we, we know that the teachers did their survey has has there been a survey of parents yeah what are the impacts are to the parents because i mean i've i've i actually don't, i've heard just from one that was just horrified at the idea huh. what they don't well, get they wouldn't very few families get a two-week break and this just loads a whole big problem in their lap so the difference is oh, do we come back on a thursday the second mm -hmm. and have two days of school or do we Wait until the following Monday. Right. And you're going to hear all so we've been sitting through these, so we're hearing the different arguments as people bring them up. But, you know, exactly what Phil was just kind of talking about. I mean, you have the one side, which is a nice long break. You know, I think it's kind of easily packaged. The other the other side is that, um, you know, some people don't have that much vacation time or have to use a lot of their vacation time at that point. Um, and or, you know, you know, families that don't, you know, it's kind of equity um another point that was brought up at the last meeting you'll hear these again at the joint meeting but the uh you know two days in january are far more productive than two days in june so don't trade those days out um and the amount of time the kids are away from school well it sounds nice the re the re-entry is going to be harder 
Um, and so even though you're coming back those two days, you're going to get them reset to come back full force the following week. And we don't so, have any programs here, right? For parents, if they could bring their kids or anything like that, if they're working, we don't have any training. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so anyways, it's, again, it's, I try to put everybody in perspective of this. We are going to have to, at Frontier, at the, Frontier, at the joint meeting, decide how we're going to decide it. Whether it's going to be the weighted vote of the re of the thirty-eight, or if it's going to be um, how we did the you know the superintendent thing, each committee is going to vote and get a weight. We're going to have to figure out prior to our voting how we're going to do that. Um, and again, we're not moving them out. We're just picking a calendar with a longer vacation or a shorter vacation. And as I said, if someone really is going to go to Australia for two weeks, they're going to go to Australia for two weeks. So it's really about the, kind of the everyday kind of person. Have we ever had like a parental survey for changes like this? No, we could do that. It'd be good to know. I think it is hard to know. Yeah, we don't have both sides. We have because um, uh, what, what and what this really impacts in per, per, parent family wise, what this really impacts most negatively is the way larger percentage than people think of parents that are working in the service economy and do not have significant benefits or vacation days and then are are faced with the need to still work and either leave children unsupervised for an extended period of time or daycare for which is very expensive and etc and so those are the ones that are just like are you kidding me right so it's just i think it'll be parent survey is good to have that extra piece of information but if you it's not just a popularity vote i guess would be because if you have 55 percent you know what I mean? Versus, you know, 55 to 45, is that really enough to, you know, versus if you had 80% that said that might, you know, but we don't know, we don't know. So right. We don't know. We don't know. Some people okay. might like it. They may want to take so, a vacation during that time. It frees up more time for them. <coughs> we just don't know. Well, one thing that's interesting is if, if we come back right on the second, the last day of school with no snow days is a Wednesday. If we postponed to that following Monday, the last day of school with no snow days falls on a Friday. So if you have one snow day, yeah. then you also have to come back that next week. There's not, and there's not those two days of snow days that- Phil's is. favorite, Juneteenth, that would come into play. <laughs> <laughs> right. Potentially if there were enough snow days. Right, if, if there's a shift back the other way, at this point, if we come back on the um, January 2nd, then the last snow day is the 18th, and it's not in time. So anyway, it'll be, it'll, be, it'll be a long discussion over those. I just kind of laugh because it's like, you know, it's half a dozen ones. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, you're, it doesn't, you're not really, you're not really, it means, a, it means something, but, you know, there's also the argument that buildings will get more cleaned out from illness and sickness because two solid weeks people away. Yeah, you know, then you I can have the opposite side that says, no, people are going to travel and they're going to go get sickness and they're going to bring it back. You know what I mean? Like, you could just, there's a counterpoint to every argument. I think child care is the biggest factor. Yeah. Where it's available in the summer, it may not be available in the, in December. And, so and, we don't know how much of that we're looking at with the parents. So. And this is one of the issues, and you, these, these crop up from time to time, that it's like the biggest difference of opinion is going to be like socioeconomic. And, you know, and because the professional the university employees, et cetera, that, you know, this is two weeks, they're going to, yeah, like, yeah. You know, we're going to the islands, you know, the service employees are saying, oh, we got to work. You know, it's just one of those things. And that's why it, if you do a survey, it's going to be something like what Victoria, you know, they were, what'd you say, 60%. That's the union's what, 120 people. So that's like a difference of 10. I mean, that is like hardly a ringing endorsement for like one, it's pretty close vote. So but we don't know what percentage of them voted. That's 60%. Of right. Those. What did yeah, the right. students yeah, want? Do they want to have it. more summer or do they want to have more Christmas? Um, they are all about immediate gratification. You know, oh, I hear about <laughs> snow days every single time. It's like, right, right. I don't care about the summer. I want the day off tomorrow. Right. <laughs> right. Right. It's all the summer. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? they call it the, it's called, I call it the Dorito complex. They will eat a whole bag of Doritos because they don't care about the consequences of the whole bag of Doritos. <laughs> well, they are hard to stop with just one. Yeah, I think I'm really glad that 
we've had a chance to talk about it tonight and then when it does come up for a vote we'll have uh, potentially more members here to weigh in with their vote. Well, it will come up at the joint meeting, right? And we then voted they the, vote. Yeah, you're going to vote, like, vote it at the joint meeting. When's the date on that? That's the it's the April, it's, it's April, your April, April meeting. Just, April okay. Because you all you do have to be the same for your yeah. questions. I'm sure someone will bring this up at the joint meeting, but one of the other committees also brought in um, the fact that it's two more days for families who rely on school meals as a big part of that week. Yeah. Yeah. Two Especially at an expensive time of the year. Yeah. You're paying more for heating, lighting. This is a union decision. Yeah. No. This both just you guys have to share you share buses and do you mean union, union as in the teachers union? No, no. Like our whole union has oh, to. Yeah. We all have Everyone to, be, needs to be on the same page. So if we we all have to. Decide. So we're just, that's why we're doing the reading now, so you can start thinking about it. And then oh, we're the going to do it at joint meeting. Oh, I got it. We're going to vote okay. it at the joint meeting. Yes. Okay. But theoretically, we're all independent school districts, yes. and theoretically, we could vote different. Counties. You could, right? Like, I, I, would, I would theoretically. Know, I would actually so. have no buses. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness! Yes. Right, and then we'd be changing the start time. Gus so. goes back with us. Says, "Wait, we might as well just regionalize." Exactly. Exactly. I, uh, yeah, I, that is a different topic for a different day. Yeah. All right. Um, so the uh, maybe a less contingent first reading. We'll we'll find out. Um, the, 24-25 school committee meeting. Calendar. So again, take a look at it over. Um, basically, that made it off of what we did last this year, rather. Um, same pattern, but you know, we set the calendar because you guys can set a date anytime you want, but you can't do it when I'm on a different meeting. Mm -hmm. You actually could. Do they always have to be Tuesday, Thursday? Good question. No, kind of same. You guys can you can move yeah. them to okay. other night. Um, in fact, during the Oh, during the other time of year, we do Monday. We I do Tuesday. I have meetings during budget season, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then I feel usually fill another meetings on Monday. Um, because there are weeks where we are out every night except Friday. Will Will school committee meeting calendar be on our March twenty eighth, yes. so we can look at it again? So what's going to happen is we are going to hold, we are going to vote the school committee calendar. And then you are welcome as your committee to change it any way you see fit based on what's on that calendar. So hmm. we do it together because you can't say, well, we want, you know, we want the prime time of, you know, of certain, you know, that kind of thing. We're trying to set it because of our resources and that kind of thing about trying to divide things up. As you know, we try to stack them certain times a year and then not that times a year. But if you want to move to a Wednesday level in our stacking, but um, yeah. you know, that kind of thing, or if you want to move, if you have proposed changes within it, like you want to move to, I don't know what your, your comics are, but if you, have, if you would say during budget season, can we trade with Waitley? We're on Thursday, Waitley's on Wednesday. Yeah. You just simply send me an email and I can throw it out to their chairs and people may not care. Well, we know that there are <clears throat> other school events happening on different nights that impact, you know, being right. able to attend and things like that. So, um, all right. Sure. Thank you for, for that. One. And then we have the, uh, SOA plan. So Student Opportunity Act requires me to submit a plan to the state um, based on um, so that we show how we're spending all the money that they're giving us. So SOA oh, for Conway okay. is about $4,000. $4,000. Um, really, obviously, this is sweeping state legislation where they, you know, some districts got millions and they want to know how it's going to be spent in additional money. We got $4,000. So um, in summary, I do have to get a vote from you guys by, by the state law, I guess, mm -hmm. um, and I have to submit that to the state. Um, but basically, we are using the additional money um, of Chapter 70, which is SOA, um, to measure and monitor our high quality instructional materials and with ad and adoption and implementation. Um, we are also going to uh, measure and increase the usage of improved literacy screeners and adoption of benchmarks and comprehensive early literacy curriculum and we're going to work on decreasing our absentee rate, which is kind of a statewide goal that we just kind of jumped on because absentee rates are higher than they've been prior to vote. Well, those are all excellent, though. Worthy uses of the SOA. Yeah, super. Thank you. Um, so I'll entertain a motion to accept the SOA plan as presented. So moved. Uh, second. All right. 
All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, reports, committee chair. Uh, was there any report given? Chair? Nope. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I have. Um, I, there's something that I was talking to Elaine about, and I just wanted to say the last time I was in one of these meetings was in January, and I had been going. So that was day seven of one hour sleeps. I, I, I was running a transfer pump for myself and for the state for the because there was a stream behind the stream behind my house that when it floods goes into my basement and knocks out my electric and heating and um, it had clogged the state because when it when it when it flooded the state also the road so the state was going to be coming and fix it but they dropped off a transfer pump I had to fuel it every hour oh my goodness um, and there was one night when I got someone else to do it but I had to put fuel in this thing every hour so I was having to sleep with an alarm clock that would go in 45 minute cycles. And then I would have to get up, go outside in January, it was freezing, fuel the thing, whatever. So it was seven straight nights of that. And then I had a school committee meeting. And and you can ask anybody, I was still going to meetings. I fi Finally, a friend like took my car keys on day eight. So but um, but I, I was just saying all kinds of inappropriate things to everybody that I knew all the time. And it was, com I was completely out of my mind. And I, 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 I looked at the video, what I said, it was horrible. And so like, I, I'm on this committee because I wanted to be on it. And um, I like everybody's company. I value what everybody does. And I made it seem like that wasn't the case. And so I'm really sorry about all that. And, um, but yeah, I don't recommend doing that to yourself ever, <laughs> ever. And there was no, I tried mechanical fixes. There was, we even, there was no alternative. Somebody had to do it and nobody wanted to get up at two, three, four, five, like to do that. But the state fixed the drain pipe. Now there's no flooding. It's beautiful. Everything's wonderful. But and um, now you're here and I'm here. And but that Italian. was, that was a catastrophic meeting. And I'm just so sorry about that. So yeah. There you go. Thank you. Um, collaborative report? Um, I don't have too much for the collaborative. I was in there in good shape. Um, they just completed their audit. They haven't had any findings. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Beacon program um, at GCC and Greenfield Public Schools, but they do want to expand it into Franklin. So it might be something that um, might be proposed. I don't know if Darius, you, prob you probably know about it, but um, but it's a high school level. So that's, that's where they're moving. Okay. But they're doing good. Cool. Thank you. Okay. And uh, Superintendent, your report. Um, it's a long meeting. Because yeah, I should. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Executive session is next on the agenda. But I don't think we have anything for that. So, uh, so the last one is adjournment. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.